Package management is fundamental to the way that Linux and modern software development works. But especially on the development side, the software supply chains aren't as strong and reliable as you might like to think. And every so often, a malicious action will take place where a package isn't exactly what it would seem. Sometimes projects just vanish off the face of the planet, ruining massive dependency trees. Sometimes projects get taken over and start shipping malware in the form of things like crypto miners. And sometimes the packages are just malicious from the start. And once again, a malicious package was discovered in cargo. This package is called Rust Decimal, exploiting a concept known as typo squatting. So there is another package called Rust underscore decimal. That is the legitimate package that does everything it's supposed to do. That package was not taken over, but this new package exploits the fact that some people will occasionally misspell that name. And if it didn't get caught so early, it would have done a really good job. Because this was almost an identical copy of the 1.23.5 version, with the exception of the decimal new function. When that function was run, it would download and execute a binary file. Luckily, when this was discovered, it only had about 500 downloads, so not many actual users were affected by this. But it just goes on to the ever-growing list of malicious packages being discovered. This is by no means every single one of them, this is just the notable ones. And whether it's Node IPC, Colors and Faker, whether it's Leftpad in 2016, or any of the hundreds of packages in between, how does this keep happening? Well, whether it's on NPM, PyPy, RubyGems, Cargo, or even the AUR, all of these share a very, very similar problem. It is way too easy for any software vendor, any software developer, to distribute and share their software around. Now, the specifics of getting a package on any of these package repos, any of these package managers, are a little bit different depending on which one you're using, but the general process is as such. Firstly, you'll start by putting the project into a format compatible with that package manager. Whether it's a build script on the AUR, or whether it's a specific folder structure and things like that. Then you go and make an account on that service, and basically then you just add the project to the repo. And that's pretty much it. There's no third-party verification of the safety of that package. In most cases, no check if you're actually copying someone else's project. Maybe you'll see a compile check, but that's generally the extent you'll see. There's no waiting period until the package goes public to allow for a third-party verification of the package, maybe like a moderator on the platform to, you know, make sure the package is actually safe to use. The third-party verification isn't done until the package is actually out in the public and infecting other people's systems. There is generally no checks to make sure that the project you're uploading isn't a copy of someone else's project, maybe in the case of a typo squatted situation. I know in Cargo's case, they are working on some checks. Maybe you will see a compile check in a lot of these, but that's generally the extent you'll see. For the most part though, publishing a package is a few minute process, and if you're using something like NPM, because JavaScript is such a lacking language, you might end up having millions and millions of people depending on that package, if not directly, indirectly through the dependency tree nightmare that is NPM. And in most of these cases, the package isn't mirrored by the package repo. What I mean by this is if you download something from NPM, NPM doesn't have a copy of this, it is downloading it directly from the developer's GitHub. So if the dev decides, hey, I have 10 million weekly downloads and I want to cause some chaos, if they just go and delete the repo, that package is still in NPM, but the repo is now gone. Now, I can't speak for every package repo, but for NPM in particular, it has a really bad problem. There is a lot of packages that are attached to emails on expired domains. These researchers found about 8,500 emails. And the big problem with this is if someone was to do something like, say, buy the domain and then respin up the email, they can then reset the password on the account and take over the package. And NPM, at least until very recently, didn't have any protections against this. And even now, they don't really have any protections. What they have is for the top 100 maintainers, they are forcing 2FA. But you can't force 2FA for accounts that are already abandoned. 
there have been individual package takeovers in this manner, like the for each package, but the fact that this hasn't been done on a wide scale isn't anything to say about NPM security, it's just the amount of effort it would take. And all of that is to say that it leads to an incredibly weak software supply chain. But then contrast this with the package managers used on Linux. We'll call them system package managers like, say, apt, pacman, dnf, and things like that. Generally, any of the packages in those repos, the vendors of the software, the software developers, do not package them directly. This isn't to say that it's always the case. There are certainly some exceptions for developers and companies that are well-known and well-trusted. For example, you might see OBS packaged by the OBS team or Firefox packaged by Mozilla, but generally, it is a third-party distro maintainer that handles the packaging of that package. What this means is, let's say we have a program called Terminal X, and inside of the distro, this is version 1.0. But after this point, the software developer decides, I'm going to go and integrate some malware, maybe a crypto miner, things like that. Or maybe the project gets taken over. Now, inside of the distro, this doesn't have to move past version 1.0. The dev can do whatever crazy things they want to do, but until the distro maintainer decides I'm going to go up to the newest version, nothing is going to affect the distro. Now, I'm not going to pretend like that always works and a malicious package will never make its way into your distro standard repos. Maybe whatever it's doing is hidden really, really well. But by having that third party there, it allows for a sanity check to at least in some way make sure it is safe. Typically, packages will also be cryptographically signed, commonly with something like PGP. So even if the maintainer's account is taken over, if they don't have your signing key, they still can't sign the package as you. Obviously, these measures don't resolve every single situation, but they do lead to a far lower percentage of malicious packages in these repos. And in theory, applying this model to NPM, PyPy, and things like that sounds absolutely great. In practice, though, the size and the scale of this model makes it highly impractical and incredibly expensive. Just on NPM alone, there are over a million packages. There are not a million packages on every single Linux distro merged together. But let's just assume that money and labor wasn't a problem. By doing this to something like NPM, it would massively slow down development in this space. Now, you can argue this is a good thing, but with all of these other people relying on these packages, you're not just slowing down those individual developers, you're slowing down the entire space. I do believe there's a sensible middle ground between these solutions, though, and some of them, like the AUR, do make use of some of them. Firstly, NPM requiring 2FA is a massive step up. It always should have required 2FA, and everybody else in this space should follow suit. Also, the person maintaining the package should be required to do signed releases. Even if that's the developer, even if it's anyone else out there, this is to ensure that if the email address is taken over, that someone can't just go and upload whatever they want. Also, please just mirror the package's repo. Don't just pull from the developer's version, because at any point in time, the dev can do whatever they want to the repo, and the package manager has no control over it. While dealing with new and continuing projects through 2FA and signed releases is relatively easy, there are all of these legacy projects on those expired email domains that still have to be dealt with. And that's a much harder problem to solve. I think probably the best solution is periodically, if something hasn't been updated, let's say it has been updated for three or six months, check if the domain of the email is expired. And if the domain is expired, maybe just, I don't know, archive the package and don't let it be updated again. So if that email becomes active again, Whoever the developer is has to start up a new package. It's not a great solution and does take away some control from the developers, but if something is being completely abandoned and is still actively being used, I think it's a better solution than risking that takeover. What it doesn't deal with though is packages and developers that are malicious from day one, but without having a third party maintainer, I don't know if there's any way to deal with that.
But let me know, how would you deal with the situation if you're running something like NPM, PyPy, or anything like that? What measures would you put in place to deal with malicious packages and make sure they don't happen in the first place? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to something, Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.